Hello, I'm Claire Smith, welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to do the 12 months of fragrance tag. The idea of this tag is that you pick out one perfume from your collection for each month of the year. So in this way you get to see people's kind of breadth of their perfume collections and you get to see what people's tastes are like across the year. So, you know, whether they like fruity fragrances in summer or whether they like you know, deep dark ones in winter, that kind of thing. I find it quite interesting watching these tags because people tend to bring out their favourites. People tend to bring out the things that they perhaps don't always show on their channels and it's just really interesting. I think this tag's been going a long, long time, perhaps even over a year and it's just been resurrected. So if you haven't done this tag, please consider yourself tagged. I have no idea who started this tag, but if someone can tell me, I can credit them below. So let's be traditional about this and start with January. So the first fragrance is Cacherelle's Yes I Am. And I haven't seen one person not like this fragrance on YouTube. It seems to be a university liked fragrance. And the price point is really good too. So this is what, £20 for 30 mil, perhaps not even that. This one is a really milky raspberry fragrance, but it's got ginger and licorice. And those two notes just really make it very interesting. A little bit spicy, but you know, not, not very, very spicy. Just to give it a little bit of warmth and a bit of interest. There's also caramel here, and it's quite often described as a, a raspberry milkshake, a raspberry caramel milkshake fragrance. It is sweet, but it's not cloyingly so, and it's just a really delicious milky fragrance, and it's one that's kind of addictive. It's one that you can't really put down once you start wearing it. It's something you want to wear every day. So this is my pick for January, a calorie-free but sweet treat for those dark days after Christmas. So that's Cacherelle's Yes I Am. So February is my birthday month, and where I live, we have a rhubarb festival in February. So the fragrance I'm going to choose is Richie Richie by Nina Richie. So this fragrance I got quite recently and it's got quite a tart green opening with bergamot and also with that really prominent rhubarb note. But in the dry down it gets rosier, it's more like a rose syrup, a sweet rose syrup with patchouli and also a bit of, sort of white florals in the background. So this fragrance smells almost boozy at points, it smells like a, a tart but sweet rhubarb gin or something like that. I think this fragrance just makes me think of this time of year um, where I live. It's just very evocative because of that rhubarb note. I don't think this fragrance is universally liked. I think this is not probably a safe blind buy because it is quite tart in the opening. But I, I really enjoy this one. So that's Richie Richie by Nina Richie. So for March, I'm going to choose the mermaid fragrance, the one that people describe as the fragrance of a mermaid, and that is Nina Ricci Chant d'Extase. So this literally translates as the song of ecstasy. So I assume that's referring to the siren, siren's call from the shoreline to tempt the sailors onto the rocks or something. This one does have that feeling of, of the sea. It almost smells salty, almost, but not quite. So this opens with, with ginger and lemon and most prominently raspberry. Raspberry is really the thing along with the ginger that dominates this fragrance. It's really quite fresh, but also fruity. It has a creamy, watery florals in it. And it also has that sort of sweetness, the caramel, but it's not an overly sweet caramel. It's quite a well-balanced caramel that fits in nicely with the rest of the fragrance, doesn't over-dominate. And this one dries down to be a, a gingery, caramelly, kind of almost salty musk is how I describe it. It's a really interesting one. So that's Chant d'Extase, my choice for March. So for April, we know in the UK, don't we, just how split spring can be. It can be beautiful weather one minute and then it could be wet the next. And the fragrance I'm going to choose to reflect that is Balenciaga Paris by Balenciaga. So this fragrance I think is discontinued, but I have still seen it on websites readily available. So this one is mainly a violet leaf perfume to me. It, it opens very green and almost stem-like in with violet leaf. And then as it dries, it becomes more violety and you then get sort of a bit of musk and also some blonde woods. It's a very sort of gentle perfume, but it also feels kind of cold and aloof. It feels like somebody who is hard to get to know. I really identify with this fragrance. I feel like this fragrance fits my personality. I feel like this one it is something that, you know, I feel akin to. I feel really drawn to this fragrance for some reason. I don't really know why. Um, it isn't traditionally my type of fragrance at all. It's got a definite vintage vibe about it. 
it's not vintage in the sense that it's aldehydic. It's vintage in the sense that it's a little bit powdery. And it's also just not super sweet like fragrances generally are on the market right now. I think it's it's just a really interesting one from, from my point of view. It just stands out in my collection as something a little bit different. So that's Balenciaga Paris. So for May, bright and sunny weather, height of spring, loads of holidays. I was going to go for insolence, but you know, you can have too much violet in your life, can't you? And I think I need to quell that obsession. So I'm going to choose a fun one, one that is just so bright, so in your face, and it's just, it just says fun all over it. And that one is Angel Nova by Moogler. This one is to me just like a a rose, a bright pink rose, a really strong, really fluorescent rose that's been doused in in lychee and, and raspberry pop, really artificial pop, like fizzy drink. Fizzy is, is the name of the game with this fragrance. It's a fragrance that will last for days. I think I wore this fragrance on Sunday and I could still smell it just in my room on Thursday and Friday. It's that strong. It's that long lasting. So this also has Akigala wood in the base of this fragrance. And that is supposed to be a mix between um, a sort of peppery note and patchouli note. It's an artificial note. And I think for some people, this fragrance can get a bit woody and a little bit off-putting. But I really like that sort of woodiness in the base. And yeah, for me, it's just a really luminous fragrance. It really says happiness, brightness, sparkliness, everything that is over the top. And I, I just really enjoy it. So that's Angel Nova, a perfect one for May. So June is the start of this summer, isn't it? It's the time when you start thinking about holidays and, and going away or vacation if you're in the US or, or Canada. And the note that makes me think of holidays most especially is coconut. So I'm going to choose a coconut fragrance for June. And the one I'm going to choose is Guerlain's Coconut Fizz. So I remember last year trying loads and loads of coconut fragrances. And this is the one that I finally bought because I wanted something that wasn't super sweet. I wanted something that was more of a fresh coconut. This is a very fresh, almost watery coconut. So in the opening, there's bergamot, but you also get the coconut. And then as it dries, you get more of the sandalwood and the vanilla in this fragrance. It's really quite a nice sort of coconut water kind of fragrance towards the end with, with the sandalwood and the vanilla. It's just really refreshing and perfect for quite a warm day. So that's my choice for June, Coconut Fizz by Guerlain. So for July, I'm going to go for one that I was actually given last summer, at the end of last summer. And I felt like I'd missed the boat with the best time of year to wear this one. So I'm hoping to get a lot of use out of this one this year. And this is one that Paola gave me. So Paola Bianca. So this one is Alluring Fig by Theodorus Calatinus. And I think she gave me this because I really like fig in perfumes. And this is probably one of the best representations of a fig plant that you're probably going to get. So it smells like the green leaves of the fig plant to begin with. And it reminds me a lot of that kind of damp, cool, green vine leaf smell that you get in greenhouses when you've got a grapevine growing. That's what this smells like to begin with for me. As it dries, it becomes more vanilla-y. You get kind of a, a light green vanilla from this fragrance. It's really quite a pretty one and so absolutely spot on for how fig plants smell. You know, when I've, when I've been near them on holidays and seen them in people's gardens even here, they do smell like this perfume. Paula also sent me a sample of Coffee Addict, which is another perfume by Theodorus Calatinus when she sent me this perfume. And I really like that one too. So I feel like this house is probably a good one to check out. So that's Alluring Fig. So for August, I'm going to go for a watery alien and my watery alien is Alien Mirage. So this fragrance came out in 2020, I think. And I remember last year, on one of the hottest days of the year, I went to a friend's house and stayed over. And I remember using this fragrance. I remember taking this fragrance with me. And yeah, it, it just suited the hot weather really, really beautifully. So this is a very watery feeling, but also quite rich floral. So it's got syringa in it and lotus. So syringa is meant to be something that resembles a mix of kind of orange blossom, honeysuckle and gardenia. For me in this fragrance, syringa smells more like honeysuckle and maybe a little bit gardenia, but not so much orange blossom. It's definitely got a more of a creamier feel to it. 
This fragrance also has an almost metallic twang to it. it it's really quite contradictory because it doesn't smell sharp. It doesn't smell something that is you know unpleasant it smells quite soft and quite floral but there is that kind of background metallic thing to it which really does make it quite interesting i think this is for sure my favorite version of alien i know that's not a thing to say is it on youtube you're supposed to love the og or you're supposed to like alien essence absolute aren't you but i like this one so if you don't like jasmine this might be the alien for you so that's alien mirage so September, the fun's over because I'm married to a teacher, so we can't go anywhere in September on a cheap holiday. We have to go in August. So the fragrance that I'm going to choose for September is one that reflects a time of year when the sun is still quite warm, but it's not super hot. And I don't want to wear this fragrance when it's super hot because it can be a little bit cloying. And that is Tom Ford's Orchid Soleil. So this fragrance is a, a warm, dusty red lily and tuberose fragrance with a lot of chestnut in the dry down. It's really quite a, a sunshiny feeling fragrance to me. It feels like, you know, late summer. It's just perfect for, for that time of year. It's one that I don't often reach for outside of that time of year. It just doesn't fit for me. It's got to be sort of September, October for me to wear this one. I think this is discontinued now and it's getting quite hard to find but if you do find it then I would I would definitely try try it because you might love it it does have a weird opening as I think many Tom Ford fragrances do um it does it does remind me of mothballs in the beginning but yeah it's it's definitely one that is is quite striking and quite different um definitely not one that everybody is going to love though so that's Tom Ford's Orchid Soleil so for October, I've chosen a fragrance that reflects what I'm normally eating in October. So I usually make a lot of blackberry crumbles because I like gathering blackberries. It's quite fun. And I generally freeze them all and then eat them throughout the autumn by making crumbles. So the fragrance that reminds me of blackberry crumbles, well, mainly the blackberry really, not, not really the crumble, is Gucci Guilty Absolute Pour Femme. So this fragrance is mainly blackberry, as I've said, but it's also got a kind of a deep, forest fruity kind of feel about it it's got rose as well in this fragrance and in the dry down there's patchouli vetiver and cypress this fragrance really strikes me as one i'd like to share with my husband if i could actually get him to wear a fragrance more than about twice a year that would be amazing i think he would smell great in this one i've tried the men's version of this fragrance and let, let me tell you then if you if you're watching like please just just choose this it's just so much nicer this fragrance does fade, but actually I don't mind respraying because the opening to this fragrance is really the best bit of it. So that's my choice for October. Gucci Guilty Absolute or Fun. So for November, I'm going to go for quite a sweet fragrance, one that is good for cold nights and one that reminds me a lot of bonfires. And that fragrance is Latafa's Amir Al Oud Intense Oud. So this fragrance is definitely my favourite of the Latafa fragrances I've bought. And I just think it's really super approachable for someone who's a Middle Eastern fragrance beginner. This one I think is quite likeable. If you like really vanilla-y perfumes and really sweet perfumes, this is a good one to try. So this fragrance is really quite sugary. It, it feels almost like it's a granulated sugar. It's that sweet. And it also has a very sweet vanilla and a woody oud. I think this one is widely compared to Maison Margiela um, by The Fireplace. And I kind of see it, but I also kind of don't, because to me, this is this lacks smokiness that By the Fireplace has that means that I don't really enjoy By the Fireplace. But um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people widely consider this to be a, a bit of a dupe, but I don't I don't really see it that much myself. Um, maybe once you've got over the opening, maybe it's more similar to the dry down, but I don't think I've ever really got over the opening. This fragrance is really deceiving. So this is really quite a strong fragrance, but you don't really smell it on yourself and you just get other people telling you how strong your fragrance is. So I really like this one and it's definitely a, a good choice for November. You want a cold evening for this one. So that's um, Latafa's Amir Al Oud Intense Oud. So my choice for December is a fragrance that is relatively new in my collection. I actually got it for my birthday. Um, I didn't mean to do super hinting, but I actually left a page open where I've been looking at this fragrance and my husband happened to come in and see this this page and he he was asking me about it basically and I was saying how it's discontinued and he's sort of, you could tell his, 
his like spidey senses pricked up and then he was like oh are you interested in this fragrance would you like this for your birthday and i couldn't say no so he actually got me noir pour femme by tom ford so this fragrance is now discontinued and I think it's pretty impossible to find in the UK from what I've seen, but I don't know whether you'd be able to get a second-hand one on um, uh, e eBay or some other site. So I wore this one out the other night. It was a really cold evening. It had been snowing and I felt like that was the perfect time to wear this fragrance because I don't think this is a warm weather fragrance. So it's quite... A weird opening so it's bitter citrus and there's also sort of something resinous in this that's that's just a little bit not not pleasant to begin with to, to me I wouldn't want the fragrance to smell like that all throughout as it settles down though it transforms so you get a really nice um, deep vanilla and you also get a coffee note so coffee that kind of um, like nutty ice cream that you get in Middle Eastern countries so you get that cool feet. There's also something that smells a little bit like cardamom in this fragrance to me. And um, ginger. Ginger is really one of the main notes. So this is a spicy, warm, sweet fragrance. Really perfect for December when it's cold. I feel like this one is a perfect fragrance for a bit of snuggling on a sofa. Um, and you're going to smell delicious. So that's um, Tom Ford Noir Pour Femme. So those are my 12 fragrance choices for the months of the year. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy the video, please press the like button and please also consider subscribing. And also I'm going to tag a couple of people to do this video. So I'm going to tag Happiness Sparkles, Frances. Um, she's been so supportive over the last couple of years that I've had my channel. And really, you know, you, can't, you couldn't ask for a better friend on YouTube. Frances has been amazing. And if you haven't checked out her channel, please go check her out. She's super friendly. If you're just starting on YouTube, she's a great person to talk to. She knows everybody. And she's friends with everybody. It's She's just amazing. And the second person I'm going to tag is a new channel, because I like to support new channels. And that is Silver Lining. So Silver Lining, whether she does this video or whether she doesn't, um, I don't mind. But I just want to highlight her channel to the rest of you. And also I would like to tag Val's view. So Val is another person that I've been watching from the very beginning of my YouTube time. And I would love to see her choices for the 12 months of the year. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. Mm -hmm.